Hi, this is Jason from Effective Dashboards, helping maintenance and reliability professionals get the most out of Power BI. So welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to be talking about line charts again, and I'll be continuing with the formatting and displaying of data labels. So this video is going to look at how we can stop the data labels encroaching on or covering or being covered by the, the line in a line chart. Okay, so let's get started. So the first thing is, in a previous video, which I'll leave a link to below, we have set up this this um, this line chart to only show the first, the last, the highest, and the lowest values. Now, most of the time, if you're going to be showing that, it's going to be used in some sort of trend that's quite small because you just want to get an overall idea about what the trend is. So typically, you would not have a title, so we'll switch that off. And... Um, and, and you can see here that these values are now starting to look a little bit um, not great at all because they're getting covered by the line. It's a little bit difficult to see them and it just looks a bit messy. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you a couple of techniques or one p p technique in particular that's going to solve this. So let's go into data labels. And if we look at the options here, we've got this, the formatting options, we've got position and it's set to auto. Now you can set the position to above or under. So if you set it to under, it's not helping us out much. And if you set it to above, again, it's not helping us out much, but you really want this auto because what that will do is if the value's high, it'll try and add it above the actual value and if the value's at the bottom, one of the lower values, it'll try and add it below the values. Now the issue we've got here is that there's not enough white space below or above the highest and lowest values because of this x-axis here, sorry, the y-axis here. So let's make this a little bit bigger so we've got some space here. And let's go and look at why that is the case. So if we open up the x-axis, we can see that the start and end, and it's actually giving us a warning there to tell us, look, there's an issue here with this responsiveness. Um, but the start and the end are set to auto. Now, if this, is, if this is big enough, it doesn't become too much of a problem. It does with this bottom value, this last value here. But if we make it, um, if we put it across to the side and across to the side, it doesn't become so much of a problem. However, we typically want to look at this as a little mini trend. We don't want a massive trend. It's not giving as much value. We can see the trend here without uh, taking up half the page. So what we can do is we can manually put these values in. So the start is the bottom value here. Now at the, at the moment, it's sitting at something like 97%. We don't actually know what it is, but if I type in, say, 0 0.94 or 95, we can see that now it's forcing this axis to start at 95%, to 0 0.95 and 95%. And that is giving the bottom a bit, a bit of breathing space. Okay, now because we're using a line, then it's fine to use a, an access that doesn't start from zero. If it was a bar chart, then definitely we'd be looking to start from zero. But because it's a line and a trend line, and because the the difference between 97 and 99.8 is significant, if we put that start as being zero, then it just flatlines. It just flatlines. It doesn't really it doesn't really bring out the importance of the difference of that few percentage points, which is quite important for overall equipment effectiveness. So let's turn that back to 95. So we've got a breathing space here, and then if we look at the top value here, we can make that one point, say 102 percent. So now we've got a lot more breathing space, and we can see clearly see the trend. Um, we can clearly see the start and end and highest and lowest points here. However, if we go and change this, then we've come against the same situation again. Um, or could potentially come up against the same situation again, depending on what the values are. We're probably fine actually with this um, hard-coded values, but um, the reason this is overlapping is because we've just tried to cram like 90 data points, three months worth of data points into a small trend. But we really want this to be dynamically calculated, not hard-coded. And that will take account of anything that might be, for example, say we've got a day for a couple of days for within 80%, then if we're starting at 95%, you're just simply not going to see that. So we need these to be hard coded and we can do that using this FX buttons here. Okay, so let's change this back. 
I'm going to show you how you can actually do that. So we'll change this, we'll leave, actually we'll leave that at the moment. So we can create a measure that calculates the start and the end points. And that's exactly what's going to be useful for this because what we're going to do is we're going to go and look at the lowest value that's displayed on the currently selected data. And this example here is going to be 97. And we're going to take off two percentage points and we're going to make it 95. Now, if that lowest value was 79, for example, we take off two data points, two percentage points, and it would be 60. That would be 70, 77. So it would be dynamically calculating the start and the end based on the values that are actually displayed on the on the graph itself, which is great. So let's go and we'll start off with the starting point. So I'm going to create a new measure. And I've actually got one here that I created earlier. So I'm going to go copy that. And I'll paste that in. And I'll make this a little bit bigger so you can see it. So the end point. So this is going to be the highest point. So first of all, we're going to calculate the maximum value. Maximum value here for the OEE, which is going to be calculated using this statement here. This max x of the OE, OEE percentage over the OEE table. And that's the table that's in the current filter context. And that current filter context is determined here by this select all OEE. So select or all selected is basically looking at all the current values that are selected in the, the, the table itself. So that's going to calculate the maximum value of all the values that are currently selected, which is exactly what we want, or currently displayed, which is this, which is what this all selected is going to provide us with. So that's going to be dynamic. So if we change the date range, all selected will only look at, or will try and attempt to find the maximum value for all the values that have been displayed in the current chart. Next, we're going to take that value, that max value, and we're going to add on 0.5% to that. Okay, so five percentage points to that. In fact, actually, we can even take it down to three. I think three is probably enough. Uh, yeah, yeah, three is probably going to be plenty. Okay, so let's just go and check that out. So I'm going to change this back to auto. And then we're going to see that value there is now the auto is not working particularly well here for this label here because it's covered by the line. So let's go into FX. And in here we've got field value. It's the only option we've got. And we're going to go in and we're going to choose this X axis end. And here we go. We can see that the X axis has now been, you can't really see it here. I wonder if you see it. Yeah, you can see there's plenty of room here for that X axis. Um, we can see this value here has been liberated, and you can now see it. It's it's clear to the actual line because we've got this extended x axis value. And then we're going to do the same with the y axis. So it looks okay just now with the y axis, but we're going to make it dynamic anyway. And all I'm going to do with that is take a copy of this code here. I'm going to create a new measure. And paste it in, and we're going to call this the y axis start. And we'll call this min value. And we're going to get a min x. Uh, so this is going to get us a minimum OEE percentage of all the values that are selected from the OEE table. And in this example here, we need this min val, and we're going to take away 3%. Now it might be that we can actually take away 2%. We don't maybe need to use 3%. In fact, 2% was looking pretty good, so let's change that to 2. And that might be that something you might need to tweak depending on how you're using the actual chart itself. So we'll add that in. Hopefully that'll work fine. And it looks like it has. So we just go into this FX button here. And in the OEE table, we're going to get the start of the axis. Okay, now we're going to tidy this up a little bit. If it's a mini trend, you're probably not going to want the other bits and pieces around about it. So we can get rid of the x-axis, we can get rid of the y-axis, and we can see we've got a trend here, and we're fairly confident that it's always going to be able to show us the highest and lowest values. 
because the dynamic, the x, the y axis is dynamically calculated. So we're not going to get the situation where we're covering the data labels with the, the line itself. Okay, so hopefully that'll help you again if you're creating these mini axes that only want to show a certain number of data labels. And um, if you like this video, then it would help me out a lot and I'd appreciate it if you give it a like. And if you want to keep up to date with the latest videos, I release one more or less every week, then hit the subscribe button and hit the wee bell and you'll get a notification uh, whenever I release a video. Okay, so thanks again for listening and I'll talk to you in the next video.